Hello, it's me again, Cave Cat, here with another exciting episode of Cave Cat's Movie and TV Reviews. Today, I'm going to tell you about a show based off of one of my all-time favorite comic strips. Ever since I was very young, my favorite comic strip was Garfield, because I found myself captivated and amused by all of the various antics that the titler Fat Cat would go through, or put his owner John Arbuckle and Odie through. The show in question? Garfield and Friends which was first released on CBS back in September of 1988. Before I talk about the show, first, a little bit of history. The comic was first created and released by Jim Davis back in June 19, 1978, and after it was released, it became huge. It became so popular that in 1982, Jim Davis produced the very first animated Garfield special, Here Comes Garfield, which aired on CBS in October 1982. After that special was released, Jim Davis teamed up with animation director Phil Roman, and even more Garfield specials would later be produced, ranging from Garfield on the Town, Garfield in the Rough, Garfield's Halloween Adventure, Garfield in Paradise, Garfield Goes Hollywood, etc. Then in 1988, a year after Garfield Goes Hollywood and A Garfield Christmas were released, Jim Davis and Phil Roman teamed up with each other again, along with writer Mark Evanier, this time to produce an animated series for CBS Saturday Mornings, this animated series would become known as Garfield and Friends, and like the primetime specials that preceded it, it became immensely popular to the point that not only would several more animated specials follow, but it would actually last for a whopping seven seasons. The show, as well as the preceding specials before it, with the exceptions of Here Comes Garfield and Garfield on the Town, was produced by Film Roman, the company that would also later be responsible for producing other animated series, such as Bobby's World, The Simpsons, Crow, The Critic, and several others. The premise of the show is basically the same as the comics. Garfield would spend most of his days eating and sleeping, while John would try to get Garfield to engage in some kind of activity, much to Garfield's disinterest. Although, while the show still follows the basic formula of the comic, even including the characters from the strip, such as Garfield himself, John, Odie, Liz, Nermal, and even Binky the Clown, the show actually expands on the world of the strip, and even includes characters created for the show that did not appear in the comic. These characters include Cactus Jake, a cowboy who runs a ranch known as Polecat Flats and was voiced by the late Pat Buttram, Floyd Mouse, who was supposed to serve as a replacement to Squeak, who did appear in the comic periodically, and would often complain about not appearing on the show very often, though I found him to be a more fleshed-out character than Squeak ever was, the Buddy Bears, who existed to try and spread positive messages, and in their words, teach children to be sweet and kind and always agree with everybody, Brick, a big and burly tough cat who served as a rival to Garfield whenever he would try to woo a beautiful female cat or try to get food of some kind, but would also get outsmarted in every single way, Irving Burnside, one of John's neighbors who was perpetually the target of Garfield often stealing his food and often threatening to beat up John for not keeping Garfield under control from doing so. Penelope, a female cat who was supposed to serve as a replacement to Arlene, who did not appear in the series for some strange reason, although I found her to be a very weak character, and several others. The format for the show goes like this. There are three seven-minute segments that make up the bulk of each episode, but while the first and last segments feature Garfield, the second segment of the show is U.S. Acres, which was Jim Davis's lesser-known other comic. What is U.S. Acres, you ask? It's about a group of farm animals, led by Orson Pig, who live on a farm as they try to go about their day-to-day -day lives while dealing with other problems and situations, such as having to work on the farm and especially having to deal with their own self-esteem problems as well. Outside of America, the strip was known as Orson's Farm. But anyway, the characters of the secondary segment have different personalities that make them likable in every way. Orson is the leader and the straight man of the animals, who always tries his best to keep things under control. Roy Rooster is the joker and prankster who delights in pranking the other animals on the farm. Wade Duck is the coward of the group and will often run away at the sight of any kind of danger, even though there are times when even he can be brave on his own accord. Bo and Lanolin are the brother and sister sheep duo with contrasting personalities with Bo being the laid-back and calm surfer dude, and Lanolin being the loud, obnoxious, hot-headed, and disagreeable of the two, and Booker and Sheldon, the two chicks of the barnyard, with Booker being the brash and boisterous of the two and obsessed with chasing after worms, while Sheldon, true to his name, is the calm and collected one who stays inside a shell, even though in real life that would not be possible. 
Aside from the main characters themselves, the segment also features the inclusion of Orshan's evil brother, Mort, Gort, and Wart, who only appeared in the first few weeks of the original strip, but were promoted to being the main antagonists of the U.S. Acre segments. There's also the Weasel, another character created specifically for the show, whose aim is to steal the chickens from the farm, often to no success. However, the U.S. Acres comic strip wasn't as widely popular as Garfield was, so the strip ended up getting the axe in 1989, but the cartoon still continued to air as a part of Garfield and Friends for several more years. Although the show was very popular, its popularity started to decline by the mid-90s due to the fact that CBS was starting to go through its cost-cutting phase. Rather than have the show go through seasonal rot, the showrunners decided to end the show after its seventh season, at least it was a more sensible business decision to end Garfield and Friends after so long compared to when the Garbage Pail Kids cartoon got taken off of the CBS Saturday morning schedule before it could even actually premiere on Saturday morning television due to parental complaints. It especially didn't help matters that around the time that Garfield and Friends had started its third season, it ended up having to compete against Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which had also started airing on CBS by then. Even in spite of what the Garfield TV series went through during its lifetime, I still found myself enjoying the show immensely, and I will still go back to watching the show periodically. I've even got quite a few episodes of the show memorized, and I'll recite them by heart on some days. So because of that, I will give Garfield and Friends eight and a half stars, because come on, it's Garfield! Although a lot of people say that the Garfield strip has been starting to go downhill in recent years, I still enjoy reading the strip daily. And even though Jim Davis tried again to make an animated Garfield series with The Garfield Show and most recently with Garfield Originals, I still usually prefer Garfield and Friends as the go-to Garfield series to watch. So anyway, now that that's been said, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Cave Cat's Movie and TV Reviews, and I'll see you in the next episode, or whatever video that I do next. So until next time, later! Come on in, come to the place where fun never ends. Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends.